What's going on guys? This is Alex from Part-Time First Sergeant. In this video is part two, where I talk about your Instagram support form. If you haven't checked out the first video, please go back and watch that first and then come back here and watch this one. But if you have, check this out. On the leadership, I talked about uh, troop leading procedures and, and putting together a warno and, and a makeshift op order. It, and this gives the, the NCO the opportunity to actually plan forward and execute a mission. So instead of showing up to drill and saying, hey, what are we doing today? Uh, the soldier is looking at events 60 to 90 days out. Uh, establish and develop goals uh, for members of your platoon and squad and team to further broaden their knowledge and base, increase future promotion potential, uh, this may include an official unit additional duty, right? So this is where you can add your additional duty. You pr you're, you're performing a leadership role when you're able to be an asset to your commander as an additional duty, uh, with an additional duty. So there are many things, the, you know, these leadership items here are just ideas. You don't have to take them verbatim. You're not limited to those, but these are just a couple ideas to get you started and you can go from there and develop new goals. Down to training, uh, you got, you know, I, I put down uh, directly mental one or two soldiers uh, to develop uh, the skill level one classes using military standards outlines and give class including actions, conditions, and standards all the way through the ARs and exclusively using military reference. So I know when we talk about hip pocket training, soldiers usually just come up with garbage and, and teach a class based off of memory with no military references. I, I rarely do I see somebody with a printout. I mean, when I see an NCO with a printout and they're giving classes based off of military reference, even if they're not reading it, I don't want them to read it. I want them to know it and give it, but I want to I want to see them have that reference in front of them. Because when I see references, I know that a soldier did their homework and they researched and they prepared for the class as opposed to pulling something out their ass. But if you have a PowerPoint that you obviously modified because you have checked the references and you kept the pertinent stuff to give your training, excellent. I'm down with that. Now, if you took a class and you download it from the internet and you're reading it verbatim during your class, no go. Uh, if you're using a printout as a reference, but you're not reading it verbatim, go. If you de develop one from scratch or if you're using an actual military manual, go. You can read it verbatim. You know, as long as you give a class that's interactive and it's involved, uh, the soldiers participate and they're listening and they're getting something out of it with a terminal learning objective, I'm all for that stuff. Just make sure you have something, right? And this is the opportunity from the soldier's manual. You can have a soldier develop a class. They're not necessarily developing it from scratch, but they're, they, they're putting something together as far as getting the resources, make sure they're properly researched and develop a plan on how they're actually going to execute the training. Down to responsibilities and accountability, I have on here develop a leader's book at a minimum, you know, track soldiers ETS, MOS, and civilian education, military education. Uh, yada yada online training all these other things I, I actually did a video talking about your leaders book so if you want any ideas on what you should have in your leaders book you check out that video uh, but with this I mean this is this is one of those things like sign out for your equip your equipment and maintain a hundred percent accountability of your equipment that's a difficult thing to put as a goal right that's that's an assumed that's an expected task we shouldn't have to write that down so here on this section on, on responsibilities and accountability, you should, put, you should be putting things that you are going to proactively do and achieve at the end to get a desired effect or the desired result, a development, right? Keeping accountability of your equipment, that's cool as a lower enlisted. As an NCO, now you need to keep accountability of yours and your soldier's equipment. Resolving issues at a timely fashion, meaning if a vehicle is down, make sure the paperwork is being pushed forward so that's why I push against putting uh, those types of accountability tasks in that section just because you're, it's assumed. That's your primary function. That's what you should be doing without having to hit a target or a goal for it. Another thing that I put on here, and I, I instructed all of my NCOs to have this in their support forms regardless of rank and position. Ensure that every soldier in your unit, in your team, squad, platoon, submits all necessary documentation to update ERB by July of 
the year that I'm making this video. Yes, every soldier should be submitting the documents. Every soldier should be updating their records. Every soldier should be working with the NCO support channel all the way through their uh, readiness NCO to have that discussion, to have the documents updated. That's something that you should just do, just like maintaining personal equipment. However, because I see that as a deficiency, the fix is putting that as a goal, right? If we were already doing that, even though we were expected, and if we are already doing that, then this wouldn't be something that I would have my guys put on there. But because it's not, I'm putting it on there. It's a deficiency. It's a problem. You fail to achieve that goal. Now we're talking about follow-up counseling. Every drill, pull out, that, pull out that support form. Let's have this conversation. Have you done this? What have you done to achieve this? What are the steps that you took to complete this mission? Oh, you haven't? Cool. By next month, you will ensure, right? And do it early on in, the, in, in, in during drill weekend. Do it early on. Do it on a Saturday. That way, that's, that NCO has the rest of Saturday and Sunday to instruct the subordinate NCOs and, and subordinate soldiers on what they need to update their stuff. Then it will motivate them to make sure they have a copy of the ERB and they're going through it and they're following up with the soldier, right, or the NCO. Once you have completed everything on the left side of your NCOER support form, uh, grab a copy, keep a couple copies in your pocket. Once you have agreed upon with your Raider on what you're gonna have on there, and if you didn't agree on it and you made adjustments, make sure you made the adjustments and you print out a couple of copies, uh, make sure that you have it with you. Every drill in your pocket, right? Not in a book somewhere, not in your backpack, not with your gear. Have it in your breast pocket as one of those items that you have in your uniform. Just like you have pens, you have a support form. Because any opportunity that you have, even if you only address in one block at a time, uh, sit down, you know, find your radar, go, hey, you have 10 minutes? Cool, let's sit down and let's have this conversation. And as you're having this conversation, you're gonna be filling the information on the right-hand side. You're gonna make scribble notes. You're gonna say, this is what I did. These are the steps that I took, right? Because it's gotta be measurable. You gotta have measurable steps of what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve. If you don't have steps that you can take to actually achieve that goal, and it's just so vague that it's a state of being, it's not a goal, it's not a smart goal, and you won't have quantifiable data on the right-hand side of steps that you actually took to achieve that task. Sit down with your Raider, have that conversation, scribble down notes. You know, you don't have to go to the EES system uh, the EES every drill and update it electronically, but at least have it written down on paper because at some point you can sit in front of a computer, update that information, and then click on a button that says you have been counseled, right? Um, and then when it comes time for your NCO ER, you're good to go. You're not making up stuff. You're not trying to put an NCO ER support form uh, together, you know, just pulling one out of your ask you you actually have stuff that you have done throughout the year and by doing it continually you know it's fresh and it's accurate and and it actually inspires you to achieve things as opposed to making things up at the end of the year all right guys thank you very much for watching this video if you haven't seen my videos on retirement and promotion make sure you check them out uh, also uh, if you have comments about this discussion that I just had regarding NCOER support form make sure you put that information down in the comment sections below and also check me out on social media at Part-Time First Sergeant with a hashtag Drill Weekend. And let's continue this conversation. Thank you.